Hey there, Vcon. Actor Andrew Jackson here, about to guest star in a series called Gangland Undercover, playing a badass biker, season two. I'm also going to be appearing in a feature film, it's a comedy, it's a lot of fun, called Total Frag Movie. You're watching the movies of 2017 to 2019, panel with Gareth, skewed and reviewed. Hi, fabulous VCon. I'm Ellen Dubin from Skyrim, Fallout 4, Napoleon Dynamite, Lex and the Collector, and I'm here at the wonderful Long Beach Comic Con. Check out the film reviews from 2017 to 2019 with Gareth that's skewed and reviewed. He's fantastic. Wish I could be there in person. Take care. Bye. Hello VCon, this is Gareth that's skewed and reviewed. Uh, it'd be nice to be up there with you in person, but since we're down here at our second office in Arizona as of a little over five years ago, um, I'm down here so we're going to do this via video for you. We're going to have a look at the movies of 2017 to 2019. We've got a lot of uh, great stuff to cover. Now normally this is a two hour panel, so we're going to try to condense it down into 45 minutes or so. We've got some special guests who may be popping up like some of my pet helpers and I originally thought about filming this outside but uh, twofold. One, um, I know the weather is changing up in the Northwest. We were just up in Seattle a week ago and since it's 100 degrees right now down in Phoenix I didn't think uh, I wanted to sit outside by the pool in the sunlight and uh, you know, bake myself while I uh, did this for you. Anyway, uh, a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, we'll get right to the movies right now. And want to start off with what's coming in 2017. Now, please remember most of these films have just been announced. Some of them have entered production already. Some of them are in post-production. And some of them have yet to go before the cameras yet. So, uh, you know, there's always a chance that the studio executives and their wisdom <laughs> will uh, come in and make some changes to this, uh, but we've been tra doing this for, oh my, about 20 plus years now. We've been doing upcoming movie previews at various conventions around the Northwest. Uh, mostly I'm Southwest based now, but uh, somebody told me the other day that he had me at an 87% accuracy rate, uh, which is not bad when you consider we're looking at stuff two, three years away from even going before the cameras. So this is what we have on tap for 2017. We have Amityville The Awakening, which is obviously a new chapter in the Amityville Horror. Haunted uh, houses, horror is very popular as always. It's cheap, generally makes a very quick return at the box office without a lot of investment, so naturally you're going to be seeing that. Uh, there's another Friday the 13th planned, and uh, with the brand new Friday the 13th video game also in production, you can kind of see how they're trying to line them up so that they come out uh, roughly at the same time. Uh, early in 2017 you're going to see Vin Diesel back in Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage, and you'll also see Resident Evil, The Final Chapter. Now, um, I'm taking this with a little grain of salt because they've been telling us for the last two films that was going to be the final chapter, and obviously each film ended on a cliffhanger guaranteed to lead into the next one, but Sony has said this is it, this is going to be it, done. So, you know, we'll We'll take that for a grain of salt. Uh, John Wick 2, which is in uh, post-production now, you'll be seeing that, as well as Lego Batman and Idris Elba in the uh, first chapter of the long-running uh, Stephen King book anthology series, The Dark Tower. Now, Hugh Jackman is set to make his um, bow, his grand finale, as Wolverine in the uh, next standalone Wolverine film. Now, based on the success of Deadpool, the studio has said that they are going to shoot for an R rating for this one. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, a darker, more violent uh, Wolverine film. So, very interesting stuff there. Another film to keep an eye on is Kong Skull Island. We got a first look footage of this at San Diego Comic-Con. I was actually in uh, one of the ballrooms uh, doing panels for science, sci-fi and Fox jumping between there as well as the um, interview rooms and my wife was in ballroom 20 doing the coverage so we were just getting ready for a panel to come out when all of a sudden we get the update uh, that over in Hall H the first trailer had debuted and the marketing folks sent us the, the look at it and the way I see it is I think of it less 
of a King Kong film per se, more of a Jurassic World type film in that you've got these people on an island, you've got all these deadly creatures all over the place, Kong happens to be one of them. Is he friend? Is he foe? Is he something in between? Who knows? But it's going to be essentially billed as a uh, wild adventure film. you got Sam Jackson, Tom Hiddleston. Should be really good. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, another film I'm very curious about is the live-action version of Beauty and the Beast from Walt Disney Studios. Uh, it has a very interesting cast, and one of the interesting things is that they've opted to go to for, uh, brand new songs for this time out. They are uh, looking at the Mencken and uh, Rice uh, source material for songs. There will be one or two that might carry over, but essentially it's going to be brand new songs and material, so we'll see how that plays out. You have Power Rangers, which, you know, Power Rangers, what more needs to be said about them? They are the Power Rangers. And you also have uh, the very controversial um, Scarlett Johansson in Ghost in the Shell. There are many, it feels, that should have gone to an Asian actress, and as such, they felt Scarlett Johansson's casting was extremely insensitive and not very accurate. But of course, you have the studio saying we need a big name star in the role in order to guarantee box office. And, you know, according to them, she offered them the best chance to get the worldwide release and the box office money that they need. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, Smurfs The Lost Village is also coming, more of a reboot of the series than a sequel. Think of it more like a mix between a reboot and continuing adventures without so much of a direct tie into the previous films. And of course, <clears throat> Fast and the Furious 8 will be coming out as well. A big part of it is centered in New York City. Uh, this will be the first one uh, without Paul Walker, not counting uh, Fast and Furious 3, so Tokyo Drift. So we'll see how that plays out, see what, you know, if Vin Diesel and The Rock and Kurt Russell and crew can still carry the franchise forward. The plan is to do three more films, just wrap it up with Fast and Furious 10. Um, four onward have been phenomenal box office successes, and uh, they kind of retooled it from the racing films to more of the high octane. Uh, action adventure films, so we'll see how that plays out. Um, another thing to watch out for, mentioning Kurt Russell, is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 will be coming out, and of course Kurt Russell has a very key role in the film. It's no secret they've announced he'll be playing Star-Lord's father, and so we'll see how that uh, unfolds. It also is very interesting uh, that Disney is currently rebooting the Tower of Terror attraction at uh, Disney's California Adventure to be a uh, themed uh, Guardians of the Galaxy thing. You essentially go in, you go through the collector's lair, there are the Guardians in the chambers, you work with uh, Rocket to try to get them out, and of course at some point whew, you're going to fall taking advantage of the drop ride uh, part of it. Now rumor is that right behind that area t uh, where they have Cars Land will eventually become a Marvel Land uh, so we should see more information on that possibly this coming July at the D23 Expo in Anaheim. That's Disney's biannual convention. So look forward to news from that. And, uh, you know, obviously you guys know about Star Wars Land that's currently under construction at Disneyland and uh, at Epcot, excuse me, uh, MGM Studios. And uh, we'll be talking about Star Wars a little later in the show. Uh, another show that we wanted to mention is... Uh, Get ready for the Wiggle and the Jiggle Baywatch, possibly in 3D. And yes, David Hasselhoff is back, much to the, the delight of the German pop music scene. So whether or not he'll be singing remains to be seen, but uh, Baywatch the movie is coming. Also look for, from your neck of the woods, Pam Anderson may indeed uh, have a cameo in the film as well. So stay tuned for that. Uh, another thing to look for is The Nut Job Part 2. For fans of animated films and uh, if you're a fan of suspenseful horror Annabelle part 2 is currently in the planning stages now as we transition toward later next year when we look for the big budget box office films Johnny Depp will be back in Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man Tell No Tales so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out um, if they get it before the camera the plan is for Michael Bay and Will Smith and Martin Lawrence to get out and finally get around to Bad Boys 3. And so we'll play, we'll see how that plays out. Another thing that uh, we'll be seeing is Divergent Ascendant. And this is billed as the final Divergent film. 
Uh, recently it was announced, Shailene Woodley had said that there's a lot of talk about Divergent carrying on as a television series, and she said she's all for that, but without her. She's just said, I'm not ready to commit to a TV series. I'm you know, happy with the film career and how things are going, so I'm going to stay in that plan. Another film we saw at San Diego Comic-Con previewed is Wonder Woman with Chris Pine, Captain Kirk himself, in the uh, retro-themed Wonder Woman film. It's set, uh, looks like, right around World War I, so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out with Gal Gadot once again reprising her role as the Amazon princess. So, um, I'll say this, I've always felt Wonder Woman was more of a supporting character, and I think DC kind of boxed themselves in a corner because essentially they have Batman and Superman as their lead characters, and everyone else has kind of always been set up as supporting. Um, they've done exceptionally well with the TV shows that, once again, filmed up in your neck of the woods. And um, I think there's a little bit of concern about, well, you've got The Flash on television, and now you're going to introduce, the, well, you've already introduced the cinematic version of The Flash, and I know toy makers are having a real nightmare over this because it's like, which likeness do we use? And essentially they have one for the TV show, one for the film series that is available to them and, you know, go from there. I guess the idea is that collectors will grab them both, but eventually you can have kids going, that's not The Flash, I watch him every week on TV and he doesn't look like this. But, you know, first world problems, as they say. Another film that I wanted to mention is The Mummy. Now, this is a rather interesting uh, idea. It's uh, starring Tom Cruise and... He is not the mummy, from everything I understand. There's rumors that we may have a female mummy this time out. It'll obviously be a 3D film, and Universal is looking to basically just jumpstart the franchise and get it going now. We will be covering Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios this year in, wow, hard to believe, about a week we uh, head off down there. And uh, we'll also be covering Not Scary Farm. We're kind of hoping that Universal may have some more information for us to promote their upcoming film, so we'll see how that plays out. Another horror film, and I know we talked about it earlier, and you're definitely seeing a pattern, is World War Z Part 2. So you're going to have Brad Pitt and company back facing the infected. So, you know, yay, see how that plays out. Made a lot of money overseas, and, uh, you know, Hollywood, they go where the money is. Uh, another film that to be honest, I'm glad they're making a sequel to this. I thought the first film had a lot of premise, even though there were a few issues. But Kingsman, The Golden Circle, is in uh, production right now. And uh, if you hadn't figured it out from the title, it's a sequel to The Kingsman. So nice to see how that plays out. And uh, the next film is something they filmed uh, some scenes just uh, about an hour up the road from us. And that was Transformers The Last Night. So this is the first of uh, several planned Transformers films that are in the work. First one not directed by Michael Bay. So we'll see what kind of stylistic changes. I, I have a feeling we're going to see a lot less slow motion, you know, running with explosions going bop, 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 bop all over the place. So, you know, Michael Bay never met an explosion he didn't like, and that's his trademark. So be interesting to see, it, you know, if in the production role he still insists that these things go in. Um, on this one here, it's been start and stopped for so many years. I'm kind of in the vein of I'll believe it when the cameras start rolling, but there are plans for a uh, video game version of Uncharted based on the very successful series Sony has. The um, Uncharted 4 Thieves End came out late last year, did exceptionally well uh, on the PlayStation 4. And so obviously um, you're seeing a transition where video game movies are almost always awful. And one of the biggest problems is the studios would not give them anything when they did the rights to the games. They were extremely uh, controlling. I know you're very familiar with Dr. Uwe Boll who films a lot of video game movies up in your area, and he uses them to the finance, the money from that to fund his better dramas. And he had told me when we were up covering Far Cry and Postal that they give you the rights to it, essentially the name, but you, you know you get the laundry list. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do that. And you have all these things that can't connect it to the video games because they fear it might either a undermine the video game or b compromise future plans for further adventures. So like, for example, he said with Far Cry, couldn't do a tropical island, had to set it in the Northwest. Couldn't make the mutants have this name 
you know, and the laundry list carries on, and it's not just them. You've seen this with Doom, you've seen this with Wing Commander, Mario Brothers, Double Dragon, on and on and on. So now you have this trend where the studios themselves are actively involved with the production of the films. Case in point, Ubisoft. They have Assassin's Creed coming, which is due out this Christmas. And uh, they also have plans to do Rainbow Six and possibly um, with Jake Gyllenhaal, The Division, which is a fantastic game if you've not had a chance to play it. Wonderful premise. And, um, you know, if these things are successful, you're going to see more and more companies stepping forward and saying, we want to take control. Uh, you know, they tried to do, 2K tried to do a Bioshock movie for ages, which I thought would have been great. And uh, Ken Levine, the, one of the creatives behind it, said, met with a major Hollywood director, and the first question they were asked was, does it absolutely have to be underwater? Well, since the game series is about a community based underwater in the ocean, yeah, that's kind of a given. But, you know, that's the way Hollywood works. And uh, so, keep an eye out for that. Another film to keep an eye out for is Despicable Me 3, which uh, will have Gru and the Minions back. And uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, which I'm really excited about. You know, you have um, so many characters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe coming, and this is the first film based under the new partnership between Sony and Disney, where essentially Sony went to them, to Marvel, and said, hey, you know, we'd like your help doing Spider-Man right. Sony still maintains the film rights to it, but Marvel got to come in and got to help them with casting, and uh, script, and apparently it was going so well, essentially Sony said, why don't you guys just produce it? So that's why you're seeing Robert Downey Jr. and several members from the Marvel Universe in this film. That's why you're seeing some very special guests like uh, Happy Hogan is going to be coming back, so, you know, John Farbo, a lot more. And you'll be seeing Spider-Man crossing over, and I, I think this is a very good recipe for the future. I'm Michael Keaton rumored to be playing the Vulture. I'm really curious to see how that plays out, so fingers crossed. Uh, another film that I'm looking forward to is War for the Planet of the Apes. Obviously, this is the third of the new Planet of the Apes films. The first two have been very entertaining, so we've got good things for that. And my personal favorite outside of the um, Star Wars films uh, that I'm really looking forward to is Alien Covenant, which will be coming in 2017. Ridley Scott is directing it. It is a sequel to Prometheus, but it's also a sequel to, a prequel to Alien in that Ridley Scott has finally come out and said, yeah, you know, we, we kind of were trying to distance Prometheus from the Alien film series saying, well, it's in the same universe, but they're not directly connected. This time out, he's willing to embrace the connection more, has said, you will see the egg, the face, Huggers, you will see the classic alien as well as new creatures, and you'll see the connection as they start to bring it forward. His original plan is that there would be two more films in this series that essentially would lead up to Alien and tell you how the derelict got there filled with eggs, you know, and all the ans unanswered questions like the company rerouting the ship there with, with the android, so on and so forth, Ash. And, uh, should be good. Now, Danny McBride was a very interesting uh, casting choice, and he said recently that he, he's not there in a comedic role. He plays the pilot of the Covenant, which is a colony ship set 10 years after Prometheus, sets down on a world that they think is absolute paradise, meet the David Android, played by Michael Fassbender, rumor that there'll be more than one David Android. Uh, originally, Numi Rapace was said not to be in the film, but they have said that she will be back, so... Uh, played that out, and of course, uh, all sorts of havoc break loose. Um, McBride has said that his character has a shotgun, uh, does a lot of running around for some very dangerous stuff. He said it's extremely intense, it's very dark, it is very much a horror film. And uh, Scott saying, you know, he thought he had it with a med pod scene in Prometheus, but he said he's he's got a scene that he thinks will rival the shock value of the original chestburster. So. Hard one to emulate, but I'm looking forward to seeing that. And also, you know, the plans are still out there for Neil Blomkamp to do uh, the, the Alien 5 film, which is its working title. He's already announced he's working on something else, but, you know, the plan is right after uh, Covenant comes out, he will transition over to the new film. 
and uh, Scorny Weaver, Michael Bean back. Uh, essentially, it's going to pretend three and four didn't happen. You'll there are already sketches for an older Newt, so obviously, you know the the events of Alien Three didn't happen. So fingers crossed on that one, and that will kind of bring full proper closure to the Ripley character. So again, we'll see how that plays out. Lego Ninja Goo Goo's out there. Equalizer 2 with Denzel Washington is on the planning stages. i uh, seen some photos for this, It, based on the Stephen King novel, not the television series will be out there. And um, he's got his new film coming out in a uh, few months. It's getting rave reviews, but I'm very curious about the new Blade Runner film. Blade Runner 2 is the working title. We've got a very interesting cast. Ryan Gosling's in it. Um, you've got... Um, you know, just Ridley Scott producing it, Dave Bautista is said to be in it, and, uh, you know, just so many interesting characters. Harrison Ford said to be returning, and I'm very curious to see what a, you know, a Blade Runner film shot in 3D, not this nonsense converted in the lab like so many films are, but um, Jared Leto apparently has recently signed on as well. And so I'm very interested to see how this plays out. It is said to be a sequel because under the current rights agreement, they cannot do anything that undermines, invalidates, or alters the first film. And so uh, they got Hampton Fincher, who uh, wrote the screenplay for the first film back, writing this, the screenplay for this. So, well, you know, I, I'm excited. I'm interested to see because I do think that was definitely a very big universe with a lot more stories to tell. And I'm glad that they're finally getting around to doing that. Uh, Insidious 4 is coming, and of course Thor Ragnarok, which is basically, I'm told, a Planet Hulk movie, but we'll uh, see how that is because you do have the Hulk playing uh, a key part in that one, so we'll be seeing that uh, next year. Uh, new version of The Grinch, uh, there's the Justice League film, we've seen the teaser trailers on that. A Paddington sequel, a sequel to The Croods is planned, and of course we know that in the um, Christmas time, of um, December 2017, we're going to see Star Wars Episode 8, which uh, has finished principal photography and is in post production now. Um, not sure the exact time frame, but my initial thought is with The Force Awakens, we saw the teaser trailer in December, a year before it came out. It's entirely possible we might see a little tiny taste of it right uh, with Rogue One when it hits uh, theaters this December, which is my plan. And then I would assume that the uh, young Han Solo story should go into pre-production as well. And uh, you'll excuse me if I'm reaching off here. It's my little assistant, Flynn, has decided to enter the picture. And it's only a matter of time before his brother, Seamus, decides to come into the mix. But he wants his attention. And uh, I'm just hoping he doesn't knock anything over and make noise in the background. But apologize for the delay, kind of the joys of filming at home. Uh, other films that we wanted to make mention is the Six Billion Dollar Man, adjusted for inflation. But you know, you guys with your national health system, I'm sure that's all covered for you. So you know, look forward to that. But it is a updated version of the classically major series. And um, now we're transitioning to 2018, and uh, this is when you get a lot more films that are not quite, you know, solid yet, but uh, planned, uh, you know, announced as it were. Uh, you got Black Panther from Marvel and uh, Meg. Now, here, here's an interesting one. The Megs were, were prehistoric great white sharks, for lack of a better word. So I know it's an oversimplification, but they were said to be 50, 60 feet long. Um, scientists can't quite figure out why they died off. Some because, um, you know, the theory about food supply and all that. I'm not a paleontologist or an oceanographer. My son would probably be uh, one who could tell you a lot more about them, but. You know, he's not here at the moment. And uh, so, um, film has got Jason Statham in it, and it is based on a popular book, and essentially it's about the prehistoric great white, the Megalodon, that gets loose. Now, Statham had originally said he had no interest in films with, with working with green screens and, you know, various effects like that, but I guess they must have put an extra zero on the paycheck because he signed on board and may well have also signed options for sequels. So we'll see how that plays out. There have been, um, as, as you can uh, probably guess, there have been some more interest in shark-related film. We had a very good shallow, The Shallows recently. Um, 
There was one uh, directed video with Mandy Moore that was called In the Deep, which was actually surprisingly entertaining and well done for a directed video release. So, you know, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, film I'm really interested in is uh, The Predator. That's the working title. It's essentially the fourth Predator film, but here's, here's what really has got me going, hmm, this could be something. They're playing it up like a major event film, and they are confident enough in it they're going to put it out originally as counter-programming to the next to the third Fifty Shades of Grey film. And I'm thinking, oh, that's a bad idea. You don't put a film like that out on Valentine's Day. So hopefully it'll carry over. But Shane Black, who went on to be a very successful writer-director, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, uh, The Good Guys, which uh, was a you know underappreciated hit. Um, I believe he had his hand, well didn't believe he had his hand in, some, in the Lethal Weapon series as well. He also played a character in the original um, Predator film and Hawkins and you know, the one with the glasses and, the, and who always was telling the dirty jokes. And so he is back to co-write and direct the new Predator film and so it's kind of an interesting take and he said the other films were good, but we're playing this up like a major event film. This is going to be kind of like the primo, essentially a lot of investment has been put into this. And they're trying to lure Arnold Schwarzenegger back to reprise his role. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of excited about this because you have a guy who knows the franchise from the ground up. Uh, Robert Rodriguez, I thought, did a very good take on it, which was certainly better than the second Predator film. But it just there was that little bridge that wasn't quite there and I think essentially doing this like a new film that is also a direct sequel to the first film might be a way to go especially if they have better production value and a really solid story behind it so we'll see how that plays out. Uh, we mentioned this earlier but we also have a Flash movie in the planning stages and no surprise to anyone who's followed that. Uh, the Avengers Infinity War, originally they were going to be two films, Infinity War Part 1 Part 2. Uh, there is going to be a title change. They are still planning a two-part film, but they are not going to call it Infinity War Part 1 Part 2. So stay tuned to see how that plays out. you got the Lego Movie Part 2, and of course you have the young Han Solo film due in 2018. Um, Disney is currently building a Toy Story Park over in... Uh, the, um, in Florida, in Orlando, so would it surprise anyone that as they plan for a new Toy Story um, attraction, um, they have a new Toy Story movie in the planning stages, so we'll see how Toy Story 4 plays out. 2018 will also give us Jurassic World 2. Now, also to no surprise, Universal has announced that this will be a trilogy. You will get a Jurassic World 3 out of that. So um, a lot of rumors swirling. One of the ones I've heard is London. Uh, you know, essentially, I think they're looking to up the scale from the previous film, but continue the story that perhaps there is some secret government project related to the dinosaur cloning underway. And of course, you know, I think they're they're constantly trying to mirror this whole. Wouldn't it be nice to set the creatures loose in a populated area? But at the same time, they don't want to turn it into a Godzilla or a King Kong film with giant creatures on the loose. There's a fine line between how you do it and, um, you know, go on the loose. And my wife and I were joking about Jurassic um, World that we, you know, while we really enjoyed it, you're kind of limited in the presence uh, in that you've got these people in a park, so obviously you know something's going to go wrong. Obviously, you know, the creatures are going to get loose, and that's... That's kind of the, you got to go with it coming into it, because if you look at all the Jurassic World, uh, Jurassic Park films, it's always been people go somewhere they shouldn't, the creatures are loose, bad things happen. And um, you're kind of going to see more of that, but I think the trick is that they're going to try to have a fresh approach to it, and I hope it doesn't turn into what the original Jurassic Park series became, and that was just an excuse to make more and more video games and action figures. And as the films went on, the stories went out the window. I mean, I'm not sure if you're aware, but Jurassic Park 3 didn't even have a story when they went in. They had a premise, and they essentially made it up as they went along, and it absolutely shows. I mean, they did, they had a you know vague outline of this guy and his wife go to an island with Dr. Grant to find their missing son and go. And, you, you know, you just you can't do that. You need a little more from uh, to make something like this work. So transitioning over, you're also going to see How to Train Your Dragon 3 
Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Aquaman, which should be very interesting. Um, Jason Momoa certainly has looked the part in the uh, brief images we've seen of him. Adam Sandler back with Hotel Transylvania 3, and Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them. There's also a non-Disney version of the Jungle Book planned. I believe Warner Brothers has the rights to this, and they're going to be putting this out. But based on the success of the previous Jungle Book, Disney is also doing a sequel. So we'll see how that plays out. Now, whew, catching our breath as we transition over to 2019, and that's when you're going to see uh, good old Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. You have uh, plans for a Godzilla movie, a sequel, which may be a Godzilla vs. King Kong. Um, if things go as planned at DC, Warner Brothers, you're going to see Shazam. And as we alluded to earlier, you have the Fast and Furious 9, and the second of the, what tentatively is called the Infinity War, the second, uh, the, the second part of the next Avengers film. So, you know, for lack of a better word, we can call it Avengers 4, title to be determined. Um, you also have a sequel to the Justice League, and of course, this is depending, let's remember, Batman vs. Superman, uh, Dawn of Justice, made well over $800 million, but was considered a failure, because based on the budget they put into it, and then the excessive amount of advertising and promotion, Warner Brothers had planned for the movie to do over $1 billion worldwide. It didn't do it, so therefore there are people in the studio that say, well, they lost money over this based on their projections, so they had to rein things in. Hence why Suicide Squad had um, serious script revisions. They essentially had two cuts of the film, one darker, one this one, and they stuck them together and gave you the one that you saw in the theaters now. That's why there are some areas that don't mesh very well, because based on feedback from audiences, they said, oh, we need more humor, we got to lighten it up. And it kind of ticked off a lot of people, like Jared Leto thought that his Joker character was going to be in it much more. He said many of his scenes were cut, so on and so forth. Point of the matter is, based on how things go, Warner Brothers always has the option to say, oh, you know what, uh, this movie didn't make as much money as, this, as we thought, so therefore we're not going to go ahead with the sequel, we're not going to go and do this. So, you know, we've got to take it with a grain of salt. But should Justice League 1 come out and make the money that they're expecting it to do, Justice League 2 is planned for 2019. Another film that is planned for 2019 is the long-awaited, from Pixar, sequel to The Incredibles. Incredibles 2 is planned for 2019, and we're all looking forward to that. Shortly after that, you will also see the next chapter of the um, Transformers series. And... Uh, you know, if, uh, as Disney has also announced, Harrison Ford will be back in the fedora with the whip for one more go as Professor Indiana Jones in 2019. So we'll be very curious to see how that plays out. And despite what they originally had said, that Steven Spielberg would direct and George Lucas would not be involved, George Lucas is coming out of retirement to have uh, some involvement with the production of this film. So... That's basically where we're at with uh, 2019, and that would normally be the very fast, uh, you know, two-hour version. When we do this at conventions, we um, mix it up where I, you know, whip through the thing, and then we do question and answer for a good 30, 40 minutes or so, and then we also have the rumors and the, uh, you know, other stuff. So we uh, had to keep it a little shorter this time out, but I do want to mention uh, in 2020, uh, we, there are plans for Godzilla vs. Kong. There's the Green Lantern Corpse and Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them 3. Now, some of the rumors that you want to keep in mind are Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. They've apparently gone after the original cast and asked them if they would be um, interested in reprising the characters. Radcliffe is said to be interested, but he is a little hesitant because there's that part of him saying, okay, you know, I've been able to leave Harry Potter behind, transition to some other roles. Do I want to transition back to Harry Potter and run the risk of basically then having to work twice as hard to transition away from Harry Potter once again? Um, you've got some really interesting things in the works. Obviously, Disney has got more Star Wars films coming. Uh, you switching to television, you have uh, the uh, new season of the X-Files is in discussion stages. I mean, it's a 
At this point, I believe it's a matter of when rather than if, because Fox wanna, wants to do it, Chris Carter wants to do it, Ducupney wants to do it, Anderson wants to do it, the ratings were fantastic, and it's just a matter of making the business deal happen and lining it up, especially with the way it ended. I mean, come on, you can't just leave the X-Files right there and not continue. So in summary, folks, I wanted to thank you all very much for having me there. I, you know, like I said, we missed being able to come up and uh, see you all in person and spend time with you, but, you know, nature of the game being 1,200 miles away and uh, having, you know, various things we have to attend down here makes it a little difficult, but we're grateful that we uh, were able to uh, spend some time with you and to do this. You can check us out online at sknr.net and we have the very early alpha but functional version of our second site, askewednet.net up and always if you're in the Seattle area or you can get kisw.com, you can hear us each week on BJ Shea's Geek Nation. And uh, please submit your questions to us. Very simple. It's my first name, Gareth, at sknr.net. And anything you want more information on, any details, please, by all means, follow us on Facebook under my name, under Skewed and Reviewed, or follow us on Twitter at sknrgareth. But aside from that, thank you so much for your time, folks. Have a wonderful weekend up in beautiful British Columbia at VCon, and we'll talk to you soon.